Welcome to my channel, No Agenda. As the name suggests, I'm not trying to teach you anything. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. This is just purely for fun. Of course, I have my own opinions. I have my own biases and I could not do away with them even if I wanted to. There's going to be a big learning curve. I am looking forward to your suggestions, to your ideas, to things that you think I'm doing well and should continue to do and things that you think are not working so much and I should possibly change them. So if you get a chance, do drop me a line, give me your feedback. I have a lot of learning to do. I hope to see you around. So we're going to do a reaction and a review of Never Have I Ever. It came out in April, so I hope we are not spoiling the series for anybody, but we will try to keep in mind and not give the end out if you haven't watched the series. Um, I watched it in April when it first came out and I binge watched it. It was very enjoyable to me. Uh, my husband watched it also and then so did my daughter. So I think in terms of its reach, it's funny, it's, it's relatable, it's something where you've got a person of color, especially an Indian person as the main protagonist. So we thoroughly enjoyed the series. Of course, it has some minor issues that we will talk about. And then Ruchika just recently watched this. So Ruchika, what did you think about Never Have I Ever? So, um, you know, when I started watching it, um, my first kind of uh, reaction was, what are they even showing? Is this what high schools are really like? And being a parent of a high schooler myself, I was a little appalled and taken aback. But I think as I, I sort of struggled through watching episodes one, two, and three, I wasn't like compelled to watch them, but I just kind of put my parenting aside and just started watching it. And then I sort of got into it. I mean, I thought that it had some moments of brilliance in terms of writing, in terms of the dialogues, the way the lead um, actor has kind of... Um, portrayed the character of a high schooler so that was good and I did eventually end up finishing it and my overall impression is you know as a show um, I think I mean I liked it um, you can watch it uh, but of course there are like issues there are things that I don't agree with that I just don't I think they're taking certain liberties too far with the show. Sure yeah there are those issues even I had those issues and um... But then in general, like I said, for me, the biggest thing was that the main character is an Indian person on, I guess it's 2020, but it still is a big deal, especially right now with everything that's happening and people actually coming out and talking about racism and feeling not feeling empowered enough or not being acknowledged as such. So I think that was a big step in the right direction. Uh, that's kind of the reason, I wouldn't say that's the reason that I watched it because I do watch other teen comics. So that's kind of, Maybe I haven't grown up enough and you're more thinking from the mom's <laughs> point of view and I'm still able to enjoy that completely. Um, <laughs> yeah. I cannot I, watch teen comedies anymore. I yeah, cannot watch I teen comedies. <laughs> no, I remember the other one. Um, what was it? Um, to All the Boys I've Loved Before. Did you watch that one? Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay, so I had that. an Asian girl as the protagonist and I mm -hmm. totally enjoyed that also. So I think it's in the same mm -hmm. um, uh, look here. Um, I think I, I really enjoyed John McEnroe's voiceover. What did you think about that? Oh, yeah, it was funny. It was so unexpected. Like, right. I was not expecting. I mean, I was like, what is John McEnroe doing in this one? So that was a little like, you know, I wanted to see till the end where it would kind of go and what was his um, relation to Baby and her whole family and everything else. So, yeah. And he was funny. He was so he funny. Was funny. He had such an offhand way of saying the most funniest of, uh, you know, lines. So I really enjoyed that. Yeah. And I don't know if I bought the fact that this will all make sense later. It didn't really make sense to me. But by the end, I wasn't looking for it to make sense. I was enjoying it enough for it to not really necessarily have a logical connection. Yeah. So what else did you like about the series? Oh, about the series. Um, so, you know, I really liked um, um, that they showed really smart kids, which is actually pretty um, typical of, you know, I, mean, I think in, when you're a teenager, you f think that you are very, you're invincible and you are kind of brash. I mean, at least some of them are, and they are just like, you know, quick with, I think as, as a teenager, you feel like that, like the world is mine and whatever. I thought that that came through. 
Um, and there were insecurities that were shown, right. but I think they were shown in a, in a way that the teenager still came across as really smart. I mean, I'm talking about the main characters that are there. If you look at Davy, her two friends, the competitor, Ben, you know, Paxton, and I guess these are the main people, right? Main right. characters that they actually show. And even his sister, right? Um, Paxton's sister, uh, Rebecca, right. I think that, that's her name. So they're all, they came across as really smart. And I really enjoyed that. But that sort of leads me into something that I didn't like so much is that the actors who are playing these characters are so much older. So I don't get why they couldn't hire teenagers to play teenagers. So I think I, I was looking over somewhere, I don't remember the exact ages now, but I think the, char- the actor who's playing Paxton is close to 30. Wow. So, so why do that? Because for me, right away, as soon as I looked at them, I go like, oh, they don't look like teenagers. Like they look so much older. Baby looks young, you know, she, mm-hmm. and she is young. But the other, her friends are much older. So that part never makes sense to me when they make these teen, uh, TV shows or movies. Why do they not hire teenagers? But I'm now, being sort of used to that. that. Um, aren't yeah. we used to that? Aren't we used to seeing Shah Rukh Khan playing a college boy and doing all kinds of crazy <laughs> things? So, you know, that's fun. <laughs> but the thing you said about teenagers being so smart and so confident, do you relate to that? Were we that kind of a teenager? Like, we're, isn't teenage yeah. also the time when you're so, um, you're so in doubt of things also? Yeah, but you know, you don't really show it in front of people, like general people, you would keep it to yourselves or share it with your really bestest of friends. But, you know, there's also that that thing about, you know, I don't want to show it to everyone else that I'm insecure. But I felt that we also were, we were confident, you and I were confident. Don't you agree? I'm just thinking, or maybe now I've forgotten that aspect of it. So. Maybe, yeah, yeah, because I'll check into. So something I liked is um, how they showed Kamla's character or they showed the parents that these parents are immigrants. But I find that often in North American shows, when they show Indian immigrants, they're usually taxi drivers or, you know, really on the low income threshold. There was a bit of a stereotype that otherwise we are doctors and the mom is a doctor here. But still, it was more integrated into the regular society. They've got a nice home even though they're first generation immigrants. So I really like that portrayal of Indian characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Kamala is, is really smart. What I didn't like uh, there was the whole sequence of Kamala having that boyfriend, Steve. And then she, when she gets into that arranged marriage situation, she breaks up with him. Then she gets back with him. And then when the guy comes to see her, the Indian guy who comes to meet her for the first time, she sort of acts like she likes the Indian guy because he, when he says, I'm from MIT or whatever, and she's like, okay, I like you. And then she goes back to Steve. So all that back and forth, back and forth, kind of showed her in a little bit of an immature light, in my opinion. And I was like, what is going on with her? You know, why is she not making up her mind? Yeah, that was in my notes under objections because <laughs> I wasn't sure if Kamla is being opportunistic Mm-hmm. And she just changed her mind, and for whatever reason, and everybody has the right to do that. But I don't think that clarity was achieved. Like, is it her choice to go with this Indian guy who her parents have picked for her, or is she? Because I don't buy that she's so afraid of telling her parents that she cannot marry someone of her own choice. Because here she is, all by herself, living in the U.S., doing her PhD at Caltech. Again, that really high bar. Mm-hmm. But you know, how can she not tell her parents that this is who she's interested in? So that I was not buying that. Maybe it's because she maybe it's because her boyfriend was like a, a Chinese American guy and not like an Indian guy. So maybe she 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 was like, Well, if I would say tell my parents that I'm not gonna go into an arranged marriage but I will marry this other Indian boy, it might be okay. But if I say oh, I'm not gonna do this, but it, I'm not even gonna marry an Indian boy, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There was no clarity mm-hmm. there in mm-hmm. terms of what's her motivation speak up right. for herself. Um, the part that I loved the most was the father-daughter relationship. And I mean, I love, I'm a big fan of Sandil Ramavoti's anyways. And unfortunately, in Heroes, he did get that stereotype where he was this doctor coming from India, but then he is driving a taxi. You didn't watch the show Heroes, right? No. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, you know, I love his acting. I love him. Mm-hmm. And I think in this case, too, his relationship with the doctor was portrayed so well. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I, I, I like 
fine. The only thing with the parents, what I felt was that those actors, when they were talking, they didn't seem like, uh, I mean, their, their, their accents, it seemed like they were trying to put on Indian accents, you know, now what I'm saying? I and same for really. Kamala. Same for yeah. Kamala. It was like she's trying to be Indian when she, her natural kind of tendency is probably not. She's probably not. Um, uh, they basically want him to marry his own mother. That sounds sexually confusing. It, you could sell it. And maybe we could put the money toward turning the AC on every once in a while. Turn on the AC. There are people in Siberia who would kill to be this hot. So that's the thing. Like that would be an amazing barrier to cross if... Mindy Kaling had gone and actually hired first-generation immigrant actors, mm. right? And yes. actually hired someone who was from India, would speak in an Indian accent. But I don't know if that's too much of a wall to break with general audiences watching a show of people in our accent. Do you think that's the reason? Or what's like, is, is the general audience not ready for a full-blown Indian accent show? No, I think what I think in the heads of general audiences, they have this perception that Indian accent is what, you know, Apu from whatever Simpsons sounds like, which is a really, really kind of affected, um, very weird kind of accent, right? And but I how about think you and me? Ours, yeah. I don't know. We have an accent too. Our- right? Yeah, but ours is like a, a hybrid now, right? Some words we say in the American style, some words we say in Hindi, Indian style. We are first generation, right? Like because we came here. Yeah. yeah. So as and we are both mothers of teenagers ourselves. What do you think of the mom's character? Because I mean, parts of it I relate to her. Like she is trying to raise a child by herself. That's it's really hard to be a single mom. Um, she's strict. I get that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not strict at all with my kids, but I, I admire that. I admire moms who are like, I mean, business. I, I'm just too polite with all kids. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, did you relate to the mom's character? Um, not really. I didn't. Um, and there were some of the things that she said. I just felt that they were sort of, they thought that this is what a stereotypical Indian first generation mom would be like. And they just tried to just exaggerate it too much. Like the the scene, the first episode, first scene with the textbook, don't let it drop to the floor. And that. I mean, I do understand that, you know, you have to respect your textbooks. I say that to my kids too. Don't touch them with your feet or don't let them drop to the ground and whatever. But that was a little too much. And so it was um in my mind i thought that the character was not so clean in their in her values in the sense that in one side she's talking about all that and then on the other end when the guy is there to see kamala and then she goes to the room and she finds steve in kamala's room she's like well i knew all about it all along why that she, that he keeps visiting your room do you remember that part yeah um, yeah that? and she sort of just took it in her stride so i just felt that that was a little you know ek taraf to tum itna matlab wo sab kar rahe ho tum itna indian both exaggerated indian values dikha rahe ho book ko mat haath lagana ye nahi pair lagana is and then on the other hand you're okay with that so maybe maybe it was stemming yeah, from I, that you know no i agree with you i thought she was a caricature too and she was more a caricature of people from the generation before us so the people who had maybe possibly immigrated to the us in the 60s 70s, 70s right so those aunties might have acted that way but mm-hmm. i don't think you and i are like that and if she was supposed to be in the 40s then she's closer to us than that's to right. those aunties and that's why i say that she i don't understand why the storyline could not have shown um the mom and the dad both themselves being second generation immigrants and the girl devi a third generation yeah. indian immigrant in us then it would have just made sense because you know then you're only held on to some aspects of your culture which is i think what mindy kaling herself is she's mm-hmm. a second generation immigrant mm-hmm. so then you have some idea of oh i got to get the book blessed which is a very fake outsider's view of how hindus treat the books or the blessing i mean you know you you're right i think maybe the reason why they didn't show them to be like a, a second generation immigrants themselves the parents was probably because then um you know if you're a second generation i mean if you are born and brought up here um you are sort of the gap between you and your kids between second and third generations is probably narrower than you know first and second maybe i don't I, i mean no i don't buy that because see your parents and my parents were both bo- like were born in india and you and i were born in india but there is always a generation gap 
So no, so I understand. I, there's, there's this difference between you and me in this. Um, that I'll tell you why that this difference is there. Since you are a teacher and you are actually teaching high school kids. and you were seeing the high school what it is like to actually be in the high school i am not seeing it to me it's a black hole ah, right to tujhe bhi bana sakte hain exactly ah, bana sakte okay, hain aur mujhe wo bole agar mujhe aake bolenge ki ha high school mein aise hota hai ye hota hai wo hota hai wo hota hai to main main kahungi hota hoga because i have never seen the us <laughs> high school right oh, maine to tumhari movies mein hi dekha hai aur movies mein to sab kuch hota hai Exactly, ah, exactly. Ah, so see, my ah. perception for high school is what they have seen in the teen movies, and that's why now I don't want to watch any more of those teen movies or whatever shows because they all just really, really only talk about their high school teenagers only have this one thing on their brains, you know, dates, boyfriends, sex, this, that, and all that. And I'm like, um, is it really what high school is about? And you know, it's a yeah. No, I totally hear you right? because that was my issue too. I don't think it's true that teenagers are so. obsessed with having sex and going to parties with drugs and alcohol like and that's the first um episode yeah. as well right yeah. now i i don't think that is a true representation of teenagers mind 100% of the time maybe there are moments when they're thinking about mm-hmm. that stuff and that's completely natural and i'm not judging that but i don't buy it that when we were teenagers i know for a fact that that's not what was on my mind right like it was we were so busy we were so involved with things that it really and and i guess culturally there was the taboo too which sort of mm-hmm. protects you also i find yeah but then busyness is also there even right now in the high schoolers right in teenagers i mean they have like ap classes they have extra curricular sports music this that blah blah sat prep blah blah all those things where is the time to do all that where is the time to go party you know i i mean i don't know i yeah i don't know what I yeah. don't know how to so that part all was that, just the so. complete stereotype of teenagers, which I sort of disagreed with as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. wasn't true. Now the other stereotype that I again like have a beef with is that they somehow show that all rich parents leave their kids unsupervised, <laughs> and that rich parents are insensitive. Rich parents are not available. Rich parents are just. I, I don't get this theory. Isn't it? How is it mutually contradictory or mutually sorry mutually exclusive for a person to be rich and be sensitive and be caring about their own kids also? Or maybe it's a super super rich because that Ben guy, his dad was like super. They were like super. I mean, yeah, I I know what you're saying. Even his mom's like, oh, here's a cake which is shaped like your face, and then okay, bye. We have to go somewhere, and then they just go off. So I was yeah, was crazy. Yeah, I see mm-hmm. how people say about actors that actors are human beings too. I feel like rich people are human too. Human beings too. <laughs> like why are they not treated with love and affection and compassion? Yeah, <laughs> it's not a bad thing to be rich. <laughs> no. <laughs> and and while we are talking about stereotypes, do you want to touch upon the stereotype of aunties? I think aunties get such bad rap in our culture. Like, yeah, aunties are kami aise kar diye. Has to be right. <laughs> No. I mean, but you know uh, the, the other thing is that a lot of indian uh, i guess they see kids i am including indian pakistani bangladeshi everybody like we seem to think that aunties is a character very specific to our culture i feel like that's not true like all cultures uh-huh, have right. medal some busy body right and, yeah you know and i um, how do i say this like some of the nicest gossip i've gotten from is men <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> What else? Let's look over our notes. What have we missed? Mm-hmm. I love Ben's character arc. It just his his character growth is so nice. Because in the beginning, you're thinking, "Oh my God, there's some rivalry. I don't know what's going on." Especially when he calls them the UN. Mm-hmm. So that was uh, crazy. Then, I mean, what was that? The model UN thing? That was pretty crazy. Ha! Uh, but see, that I can buy teenagers doing to each other. Like that, but just, isn't 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 modern UN like isn't it moderated now? Again, it's like I've never. Oh, you're talking about the modern UN episode. Yeah. No, no, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about how they had the nickname UN. Oh no, no, no! I'm not talking. Yeah, that is that. that I can. That, yeah. I can believe. I can believe that. Yeah. But, but yeah, the modern um, UN was garbage. Yeah, I mean, aren't there any like grown-ups around to moderate that kind of thing? Of yeah, and you know, there are. yeah. Of course, there yeah. are rules. It's uh, it's it's run by grown-ups. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's run by the students, but grown-ups are monitoring it constantly, right? Like the yeah. teachers around. Yeah, are around, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. That episode was something. 
I like the fact that the show did deal, even though superficially, with the fact that Devi wanted to run away from being Indian. And I find that, that that is very common to teenagers who are growing up here in US or in Canada, where they, in the beginning, do not want to hang out with Indian people, Indian friends, but then eventually they do come back to their Indian roots. So I thought that was well done in the show, especially during the Ganesh Puja, that older boy. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. feel that? I mean, I don't really have any personal kind of experience with that because, you know, my kids' friends are a lot of them are Indians. And then because of the area that we are in, there's a lot of Indian friends they already have. Uh, in fact, they have more Indian friends and, you know, Asian Chinese friends than they have, um, you know, Caucasian friends at this point. So, Do you find that storyline of Devi being on the wheelchair and then she miraculously heals? Like that was absurd. Why was it needed? Yeah. That was that was quite ridiculous in my opinion. Yeah. Though maybe maybe you know what maybe they introduced that because they had to have that really awesome cool great character of the uh, the shrink. I love the shrink in the show. Yes. How come we did not <laughs> talk about her? I know she was smart. She was like oh yeah, she was great, and the way she kind of took now Devi kind of threw ridiculous, outrageous statements to her, and she just took them in the stride and just kind of batted them away here and there, and like I, I thought that was so funny. Yeah, it was really good. So overall, give a number to the show. Um, I would give it a seven, and I would say if you want to watch this show, you know, just don't watch it with your whole brain involved. Number one understand and remember that you know uh, there are stereotypes in the show and there are some very exaggerated stereotypes but watch it for the writing for the dialogue delivery for you know that some of the themes are actually um, pretty awesome in there so what for that yeah i i would say eight and a half just because i'm more lenient marker um <laughs> <laughs> and I, I loved it it's funny it's um it's good to watch in in a go it's definitely like if you've got a weekend you haven't planned anything much then definitely it's a show that you can watch and yeah. maybe watch with your kids you can talk about some of the issues that come up i know you haven't seen your kids haven't seen the show no i actually showed the a few like 15 minutes of the first episode to my son and he was like he thought some of it was really funny <laughs> um like the teachers especially the first teacher comes in and the first the ap uh, us history teacher comes and you know it talks so there were things that were funny um there were some jokes that he got which i didn't get so <laughs> right. you know when she's yeah. in the wheelchair and somebody says hey fdr and you know and yeah. then he's like laughing i'm like why is that funny so he's like <laughs> he got that you know we are not enculturated in uh, i know i know yeah. Yeah. 